Practice test six. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a welfare tutor of student union and two overseas students, Claudia and Bastito. They are talking about their life and study in Leeds University. First, you have a chance to read questions one to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to ten. Excuse me, is this welfare office of Student Union? We've wandered outside for a long time. Yes, this is the welfare office. We're students from Architecture Faculty. Our professor Thompson asked us to come. Ah yes, you must be Claudia and Bautisto. How are you? Your professor has mentioned your names through the telephone. Fine, thank you. As a welfare tutor, my job is interviewing overseas students and help. Therefore, your arrival doesn't mean you will tackle the problems alone. I have a lot of things to ask you. I want to know how you feel about life in Leeds University. Who will be first? Oh, Claudia, please. Okay. Um, this is the first semester, isn't it? Could you please tell us what is your first impression about the Leeds University? Well, when I first came to this university, I was struck by how quiet it is here in the evening. The shops close so early. In the states, you can always buy what you want in the evening, but here, shops close before half past five. Yes, Leeds is supposed to be a quiet place. Where did you live when you first came here? I went to the student hostel. It has a big lounge, recreation room, and most important, I don't have to cook for myself. How is the food there? Do you like English food? It is too bland but healthy. You can't complain too much when you study abroad. Yes, right. Oh dear. How are the local students? To be frank, it is difficult for me to make many friends with British students. They're rather reserved and cold, not friendly. They seem to keep themselves. Oh, it is a pity. Well, how about the academic courses in the architecture faculty? Well, I'm doing my master's degree in this department. All right. How are you finding your courses? I really love my work. I did pretty well. I've enjoyed the courses, but the lecturers are very busy, and you hardly have contact with them. Well, that doesn't sound good. What is your suggestion to improve your course? Well, in my opinion, I think it is advisable to have regular meetings with lecturers. For example, once a week or a fortnight. Regular meetings. That sounds great. Thank you, Claudia. We will come back to you in a minute, and then we will ask Batisto. Batisto, are you from the Philippines? Manila, to be exact. And how did you feel about the Leeds University when you first came here? Interesting. It is an interesting place. The city is beautiful. Everywhere is green and lush. It is very cool in summer. I like summer here, but the winter is awful. The drizzle is terrible. Everywhere is cold and wet. How about your accommodation? Do you like it? Well, at first I lived with a family. They are friendly. They have twins. They are of the same age as me, and we all like soccer very much. However, it is noisy and difficult to study. Oh, I see. Two months ago, I moved out of the family, and now live in the student dormitory with another three students. It is much cheaper. They are very friendly, and I like to live there. And what about your courses? Do you like it? I am doing my bachelor degree. Apart from language difficulties, how do you find out about your studies? Well, but yes, go on. The main difficulty for me is that the computer centre closes so early, and it is always busy and crowded. Students are fussy about it. It is very difficult for me to practice my work. You are not the only person in that position. But can you reserve the computer room? No, we cannot. But it would help if we could reserve the computer time. 
Yes, I'll look into that and see if we can improve the things over there. Now let's go back to Claudia. That is the end of section one. You will have 30 seconds to check your answers. Section 2. Listen to the guided tour commentary and answer questions 11 to 20. You now have some time to read questions 11 to 20 first. Welcome to the library tour. We'll begin our tour of this level of the library here at the entrance. Then we'll go in a clockwise direction. So, first of all, over here on the left, next to the entrance, is a touchscreen information service. These computers can be used at any time to get general information about the library and how it works. In front of the touchscreen information service are the catalogues. As you can see, it's a computerised catalogue system and it's very easy to use. The catalogues are linked up to the other libraries at the university. So make sure you check which library a book is in when you are trying to locate a particular item. Next, along here on the left, we have the circulation desk for borrowing and returning books. The returns area, the place for returned books and other items, is at the end of the circulation desk near closed reserve. Closed Reserve, as most of you probably know, is a collection of books that are in high demand, so they are on restricted circulation. If a book is on Closed Reserve, you can only borrow it to use within the library for three hours at a time. Over there in the corner are the shelves for newspapers. The library has an extensive collection of local and international English language newspapers. They are kept on those shelves for one month and then stored elsewhere. As we continue on our tour, around to the right, this large central section is the reference section. Reference texts cannot be borrowed for use outside the library. They must be used within the library. All these shelves in the centre of this level are the reference section. Now, the stairs here on the left lead to level 2 only. On level 2 are most of the law books. To go up to the other levels of the library, you have to use a lift. Beside the stairs are the restrooms for this floor. Now, as we walk around this corner to the right, this large room on the left is the Audiovisual Resource Centre. You can come here if you wish to listen to a tape or watch one of the library's videos. Next to the Audiovisual Resource Centre is the photocopying room. There are 15 copiers for student use and we've recently added a colour copier. The system for copying uses cards, not coins. You can buy a photocopy card from the technician in charge of the photocopying room or from the information desk if he isn't here at the time. On our right, these work tables are for student use especially for small groups to work together. Or you and your colleagues can use the conference room, which is that small room there next to the lockers. You can work on group projects in the conference room without disturbing anyone. And there's a conference room on each level of the library. The round desk in front of the lockers is the information desk. If you need help using the catalogues or you need to organise a loan from another library, the information desk is the place to come. And finally, here, beside the exit doors, these two shelves contain current magazines and journals. 
Like the newspapers, they are kept here for a time and then stored elsewhere. OK, that's the end of the tour of this level of the library. I'll leave you to look around yourselves now, and if you need any further help, please ask at the information desk. That is the end of section two. You will have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. Mr Jackson, who feels that he is physically unfit, is consulting with his doctor about his health condition. Before you listen to their conversation, you have a chance to read questions 21 to 24. Now please listen to the recording and answer questions 21 to 24. Well, Mr Jackson, the first and important thing I have to tell you is that um, there is really nothing seriously wrong with you. Physically, that is. My, uh, my very thorough re-examination and the, the analyst's report show that basically you are very fit. Yes, very fit. So, why is it, Doctor that I'm always so nervy, tense, ready to jump on anybody, my wife, children, colleagues. I think, um, I think your condition has a lot to do with, um, shall we call it, way of life, habits? Way of life? Habits? Yes, now tell me, Mr Jackson, you smoke, don't you? Yes, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I do, Doctor. And uh, rather heavily, I imagine. Well, yes. I smoke, what, about 40, 50 a day, I suppose. You should do your best to stop, you know. Yes, I see. But, uh, well, it won't be the first time. I've tried to give up smoking several times, but it's, it's no good. You see, 50 a day is overdoing it, you must admit. You must cut down at least that. Oh, yes. I know that when you're feeling tense, you, you, you probably feel that a cigarette relaxes you. But in the long run, I do advise you to make, to make a real effort to quit smoking. Of course. But, well, it's easy to say give it up or cut it down. But, oh, you know. Well, in my opinion, you have no choice. Either you make a real effort or, or there's no real chance of your feeling better. You see... Well, obviously, I could prescribe some kind of tranquilizer, but would that help? I'd prefer, and I'm quite sure you'll agree, I'd prefer to see you really back to normal, not just seemingly so. And that's my reason for asking you several more questions about, about your other habits. Right. Now you have a chance to read questions 25 to 30. As you listen to more of their conversation, answer questions 25 to 30. Your eating habits, for example. What do you eat normally, during a normal day? Yes, well, I'm a good eater. Yes, I'd say I'm a good eater. Now, let's see. Up at eight in the morning, and my wife has a good breakfast ready. A good breakfast? The usual. A cereal followed by bacon and eggs with fried bread and perhaps a tomato or two. Then toast and marmalade, all washed down with a couple of cups of tea. I, uh, yes, I really enjoy my breakfast. Uh, yes, I can see you do, but I'd advise you to eat rather less. We'll come to that later. Go on. Then lunch. No, first brunch. A cup of coffee and a bun at eleven. Lunch has to be quick, 
because there's so much to do in the office about that time. So I have a pint and a sandwich in the pub. All very hurried. Try to be in less of a hurry. But I make up for it in the evening. I get home at about seven. Dinner's around about eight. Er,、uh, yes, my wife's an excellent cook. Excellent. It's usually some meat dish, and we like spaghetti as a first course. Spaghetti, a meat dish, cheese, sweet. But er,、uh, but then at the end of the day, shall we say? Then, well, then I begin to feel on edge again. Most evenings after dinner, we read or watch TV, but I, I get this terrible feeling of tension. Well, I'm sorry to have to say this because you obviously enjoy your food, but、um, I really do recommend that you that you eat less, and secondly, that you eat more healthily. Instead of having that enormous breakfast, for example. Um, well, try to be content with fruit juice and some cereal. I see, but eleven、uh... says right. Well, that's all right, but lunch should be more leisurely. Remember, your health is at stake, not your job. As for dinner,、um, I'd advise you to eat a soup, perhaps with a salad, a salad followed by some fruit. But my wife's cooking. Is superb, granted, and she probably enjoys preparing delicious meals for you. If you like, well,、um, I'll have a word with your wife. No, that won't be necessary.、Uh, thanks, just the same, Doctor. But no. That is the end of section three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers. Section four. You are going to listen to a student, Liz, giving a seminar presentation on advertising. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Listen to the talk and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Today, Liz is going to give her presentation. Liz, for my presentation, I looked at the different forms of advertising, especially at how women are portrayed by the media. So, Liz, tell us what different forms of advertising you looked at. As you can see from the outline on the screen, I looked at a wide variety of different media's, including billboards. Television ads, newspapers, and of course the internet. Oh yes, I almost forgot. I also looked at films. And what was your main finding? Well, I've brought some samples in to show everyone, which I hope will make it a little clearer. But first of all, I'd like to take a look at this first advert, which is from, believe it or not, a popular women's magazine. Now, even though this is a women's magazine, as you can see. Women are portrayed in what we might call a submissive role. That is to say, they are always the ones doing the housework, going shopping, or caring for the baby. In fact, you may notice that most adverts concerned with household products, such as cleaning materials, as well as food and baby items, are generally directed at women. Another thing you may notice about the women. Is that they are nearly always very slim and beautiful, even middle-aged women. None of them are ever shown to be poorly dressed or to be overweight. So, Liz, how are men normally portrayed in these adverts? Well, if you take a look at the next picture, which 
is in fact from the same magazine, you will notice that men are seen to be strong, powerful and in charge. They give the image of being in charge, being the ones who make the decisions. And generally, they are dressed either in sports clothes, showing their prowess or fitness, or a business suit, which serves to depict their social status. You mentioned that you also looked at films. Do these same images apply to the movie industry? Yes, they do indeed. And again, I have some images to show you. This time, however, I've arranged the pictures so that you can see clearly the different roles that men and women play in the films. Notice, first of all, that it is the man who is in charge. He's the one driving a big, luxurious car and constantly contacting the office on his mobile phone. Now, if we look over here to the woman, we see she is subservient to the man. She's his secretary, in fact. And if we take a look at her office, we see it's shared by other women and open to the public. In contrast, her boss's office, who is the man of course, has a very large, spacious office all to himself. And if the woman wants to enter, she first has to get his permission. That is to say, she has to first of all knock at the door and wait until he invites her to enter. However, if the man wants to talk to the woman, he simply picks up the phone and requests her attention. Are there any images where women are not shown to be of a lower social status to men? No, there aren't. Well, very few in fact. There are, of course, times when the woman, for example, is playing the part of a scientist with a man as her assistant. Yet even here, she is not in a position to make decisions. Decisions, in fact, are still made by her boss, who, of course, is a man. In other less extreme conditions, such as we can see here, the woman is playing the role of a housewife and mother, while her husband goes out to work to earn the money. In other words, the man is seen to have more control over the situation than the woman, who has to rely upon her husband for her livelihood. So, how far do you think this reflects real life? That's hard to say, because generally, women do tend to do more housework and cooking than men. It is generally accepted that women are better able to care for children. But the problem is that we are told through the media that women are not as capable or as strong as men. That women are not as able as men to make important decisions. This, of course, is totally untrue. Many women are at least as capable as men at making decisions. More so in some cases. Are women ever seen in the media to be superior to men? Very rarely, in fact. And when they are seen to be better or faster or stronger than men, they are also seen to be a freak. You know, someone with superhuman powers. In other words, they are not seen to be an ordinary person like you or me. Why do you think that is? It's probably because if people know it's too ridiculous to be true, then they are not going to believe it. This way, it won't harm men's image. So, what's the internet like? In fact, I think the internet is probably the worst of all the media. I don't know why exactly, but I think it's probably because there is little or no control over the internet. Instead, the internet is seen as a type of no man's land, if you like. That is to say, it's not actually owned by one person or one company. Therefore, people are free to put whatever information on the internet they want. So, would you say that information on the internet should be censored? I think there should be some control over the internet, because some of the images are dangerous. Dangerous? Yes, indeed. For adults, I guess it's not such a big problem because mature people are able to decide for themselves what to believe and what not to believe. But children are a different matter. They accept information that is presented to them without questioning that information or considering the consequences of believing it. In other words, children believe what they see or what they are told. And how do uh, other people feel about information on the internet? Actually, I carried out a survey to find out other people's opinions. As you can see from this chart, the majority of people over the age of 28 were in favour of restricting the information. It was only people under the age of 20 who really thought that information shouldn't be censored. In fact, 
only about eight percent said that information on the internet should be restricted in some way. Well, thank you, Liz. That was a very interesting topic, and I'm sure that if any of you have any questions, Liz would be more than happy to answer them. That is the end of section four. You will have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of practice test six.